Our local star, the sun, essential to life on Earth and key to the incredible transformation in energy now underway all across Africa. By 2040, Africa's energy mix for electricity probably looks like this. Solar, hydro, and natural gas each contribute about one quarter of the electricity generated, while the remaining one quarter comes from burning coal or oil, which of course put out much more greenhouse gases into the atmosphere than cleaner natural gas. Contrast that with America, where the latest forecast shows that the share of electricity generated by hydro, by solar, and by wind will double from the current 21%, but not for 30 years, not until 2050, which means Africa will turn to renewable green energy much faster. Of course, Africa's advantage being that it's not so developed, not so industrialized. Indeed, the International Energy Agency says Africa faces an historic opportunity to become the first continent to develop its economy mainly through energy efficiency, renewables like solar and wind, and using natural gas. In short, Africa can become the superpower of a new and much more sustainable energy system for the world, and three African countries are leading the way. In Ethiopia, hydro, solar, and wind will generate almost all electricity by 2040. The towering Gibe 3 dam wedged into a canyon on the Omo River is already Ethiopia's top energy source. And the Nile Dam is, of course, world news, opposed by downstream Egypt. Both of these major projects are part of a very ambitious green energy game plan for the country. But few people know about this an ancient volcanic crater about 250 kilometers south of Addis Ababa that may be one of the world's best geothermal sites. Steam just rises from the ground here. A company from Iceland backed by an American billionaire is underway on this $4 billion project. In fact, Kenya's power company is helping to develop some of Ethiopia's geothermal potential. Because we're actually looking at Africa pulling apart. This split in tectonic plates allows molten rock to rise very close to the surface. Now, you can tap that and bring up that heat to make turbines spin to generate electricity. And that's what Kenya has been doing, has actually become one of the world's leading countries in geothermal power generation. In 20 years, Mother Earth will power almost half of Kenya's electricity needs with wind power and solar also feeding into the national energy mix. Next, the Democratic Republic of Congo, hydropower giant in the making if, and this is still a big if, the government can strike a deal with a consortium to finance and build the Inga 3 Dam in this incredible cascade in the Congo River. This could be the biggest dam in the world with a price tag to match, yet the project's been stalled for years and activists say Congo should instead be pursuing solar and wind power faster and cheaper and needed because 90% of Congolese are without electricity. Back to Kenya and Ethiopia for a moment, where the World Bank says that investing in more efficient and green energy cities could create economic returns six times bigger than what you put in. In Ethiopia, $42 billion invested creates $240 billion in value and about 200,000 jobs. In Kenya, $27 billion invested creates $140 billion in value and 100,000 jobs. With manufacturing just getting rolling and cars and trucks still a luxury for most people, Africa's carbon footprint is pretty small compared with what you see in America or in Europe, yet the effects of climate change already are pretty severe in Africa. As we've seen from the Western United States to China, these dramatic shifts in weather patterns, but we're also seeing that in Africa with drought, with crazy changes in rainfall patterns that affect farmers, herders or pastoralists, and certainly hydropower. We're going to take a closer look at this in just a moment. Many Africans are losing their lives, while countless more have lost their livelihoods. The droughts and floods have left nothing behind for the people, nothing except for pain, agony, suffering, starvation, and death. Now, all of this renewable power generation sounds fabulously clean and green, yet remember that millions of people in the village in rural Africa still cook with charcoal and other biofuels. In fact, it's a major reason why forests are being depleted in several countries. And also, cars and trucks, though they're going to still run on petrol or gasoline for the most part, 
even as electric vehicles begin to appear. This is a key point that green energy fans, and I'm one of them, often overlook. Fossil fuels are not going away. If your vision is a desert crammed with solar farms to the horizon, or hills blanketed in spinning wind turbines, understand those are not going to be enough to keep the lights on. In fast-growing Ghana, a new oil producer, natural gas is projected to supply almost half of electricity demand in 2040, according to the International Energy Agency. Yet the world is making a massive shift away from carbon fuels because the consensus among climate scientists and policymakers and people just like you is the planet faces a rising threat from a climate machine that's increasingly deadly, destructive, and just seems to be out of control. We need to accelerate transition to a green and low-carbon economy and achieve green recovery and development. Then came a surprise, one that might complicate plans by countries such as Mozambique that are counting on using their coal reserves to generate electricity. China will step up support for other developing countries in developing green and low-carbon energy and will not build new coal-fired power projects abroad. In southern Ethiopia, where I once worked, pastoralists trying to improve their access to markets found themselves pushed into survival mode by the worst drought since the mid-20th century. Resilience is now the skill these people need most. And the UN has declared that Madagascar is on the brink of the world's first climate change famine. Tens of thousands of people are already suffering catastrophic levels of hunger and food insecurity after four years without rain. Who is going to pay for Madagascar? What's your spin on Africa's green energy transformation? Leave a comment below and check out more Edward in Africa.